most ministers um, within the government, we get along incredibly well. Um, look, I mean, so I'm going to separate the answer into two. So sure. I think if you if you ever walked into a cabinet room, you realize that you know people are wearing their government hats. Um, of course, we have you know tough decisions. You know, I'm engaging with the Minister of Finance, and I'm saying that I need to get the biggest slice of the budget come the medium-term budget policy statement, and I mean it. I mean, if he is listening, <laughs> I'm not joking. So, 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 I mean, there's, there is there is cooperation there, and I find actually that most of my cabinet colleagues, regardless of which party they come from, that there's genuine co because. The work of government is really just the work of government. It is, it is about delivery. It is about really getting to grips with, with information. In fact, somebody was surprised the other day that Minister Mucheha gave me a wonderful uh, handover. Uh, I sat down with her. We had tea. She told me things, that, you know. So there's a lot of cooperation. But, uh, Adrian, it's important to then separate the work of government from the politics. You're bringing together 10 different political parties who come from 10 different directions with 10 different ideologies. That is going to be messy, but democracy is messy. The question then becomes is how do you handle the politics of bringing together those 10 political parties in a way that insulates government from the messiness of the politics? That is why, for me, one of the greatest takeaways from the last week when we're talking about the Bella Act and, and all that happened around that, is that I'm glad that Cabinet and the GNU have decided to set up a technical committee that will deal with their policy differences before they get to government. Because it makes it complicated when the policy differences are playing themselves out in the government processes. It is good that that clearing committee is being set up because parties are not going to agree on everything. I mean, 10 political parties that are in that GNU don't agree about everything. And therefore, you need that forum, that political forum where you can discuss how are we going to compromise. And I think that's why the president has decided to, to suspend the implementation of Clause 4 and 5 of the Bela Act to say I, we need consultation. And I think it, that also uh, leads credence to the fact of what we were saying, that you know, send these clauses back to Parliament for further deliberation. But he's chosen to, to do the, the process of, 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 of consultation, and we will be led by that presidential process. In terms of the Bella Act, well, it's been enacted. And, you know, a lot of people, and there's been a lot of criticism around, were you at the signing ceremony? I mean, I want to also indicate that the president signs bills every single day. This, a signing ceremony is not a constitutional obligation. But you know what is a constitutional obligation? Me implementing all that is law and all that is in the Constitution. And my commitment to the people of South Africa is that I'll uphold my oath of office. As messy as this is, democracy is messy. But this is where, what the voters want us to do.